well, Shalom, dear friends in Yeshua. Um, just want to read from Luke 7 uh, today, from 27 onwards. So let's just start that. Um, the verse before says, But what went ye out for to see a prophet? Ye I say unto you, and much more than a prophet. Much more. So John the Baptist, even though teachers say that he was the sort of last prophet of the so-called Old Testament, Jesus says he was much more than a prophet. So what does this mean? This is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. And so we read in Malachi that um, Elijah was actually to come um, before, as it were, the first part of that great and terrible day of the Lord when Yeshua died on the cross and all was fulfilled. The law and the prophets were fulfilled um, at that point. Um, yes, so, so, G so Yeshua, Jesus said that John the Baptist in fact came as the Elijah which was prophesied in Malachi. Um, for I say unto you, among those that are born of women, there is not a greater prophet than John the Baptist, but he that is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. So what is he saying now? He's saying that those that are born of a woman, but those in the kingdom of God, um, well, there are angels in the kingdom of God. Um, there are principalities and powers there. And so what he's saying is, that through John the Baptist, he's preparing the way for the Lord, who is Yeshua, the Messiah. And through Yeshua, the Messiah, there is complete fulfillment and power um, in that. And he is the only way to heaven. That's what he's basically saying here. And all the people that heard him and the publicans justified God being baptized with the baptism of John. So the regular people followed after John. They listened to his ministry, his counsel to repent, um, that he was the voice calling in the wilderness, and they believed him, and they were baptized. And this is why Yeshua later on says that the harlots and publicans will get into the kingdom before the religious people, because, he's about to tell you why, but the Pharisees and lawyers, Pharisees and lawyers, rejected the counsel of God against themselves, being not baptized of him. And so the Pharisees didn't receive the baptism of John. Um, they sort of were mikvahed in, in another way. Um, you know, in Judaism, only the high priest is mikvahed once a year before he goes into the Holy of Holies. Um, it's not a practice widely done within Judaism, but it is done within the tabernacle, bearing in mind that John the Baptist was the next high priest. So he, of course, had a, what you might call Judaic rites to be baptized himself, but for him to take that right out and extend it to the rest of Israel, um, and then later on to the Gentiles, is, well, something that, is prophesied in the Bible, but it can only you can only obviously see it through prayer. You've got to pray about it and ask the Lord truly. I mean, is this talking about the priesthood of the Messiah? And it is, the royal priesthood of the Messiah. Um, and so he goes on, um, describing what, what the, the Pharisees are like. Um... You know, John the Baptist came neither eating bread nor drinking wine. Yet the Pharisees said that he had a devil because he was out there. I guess remember Legion that, that Yeshua um, drove all the demons out into the pigs. I mean, that guy was wandering around like a homeless, crazy man. But there, there was John the Baptist out there um, in the wilderness. Um, very hard to survive out there. I mean, as I say, I was in Israel last year, and uh, the heat, uh, the dry heat out there, and 
all of that, you got to have survival skills, there's no shops. I mean, how, how these people survived out there, John the Baptist went out there for years. Um, you know, just, just staying out in the fringes of society um, to preach one message, to repent. And that his message would actually give the fire of God through Yeshua. So first came the water, and then obviously the blood was applied when Yeshua died, um, and then the fire. And so that's the order that the high priest did things before he went into the Holy of Holies. First he was washed or mingled in the water, he examined his soul. Um, in sort of a, a polished bronze mirror um, and he would just confess his sin to the Lord and he would be mikvahed and that would symbolize his sort of death and resurrection remember the Pharisees believed in um, the resurrection the Holy Spirit all these things and if everything was done properly then the Lord would accept the animal which was be sacrificed at the altar and the blood sprinkled upon the altar um, if it was done in the correct way and um, the high priest then the, the, the fire or the presence of God would, would appear on, on the Ark of the Covenant and we know that fire was there by night and a cloud by day um, who, who, who led the Israelites in the first part of that um, early witness of, of the tabernacle in the wilderness and so this is an extension of the way God does things um, first by the water the testament and the baptism of repentance through what Malachi said Elijah was to come John the Baptist was that Elijah to come and so if you're in within Judaism and you're not really sure about uh, who Yeshua is, why don't you study John the Baptist? Why don't you study his ministry? Um, study his background. All of that information is there. And if you can um, understand who he is and what his ministry was, then maybe it will be easier for you to accept Yeshua. Um, because his is the baptism of repentance before Hashem, before Yahweh. Um, that we confess our sin to God and uh, repent before Him. And therefore, when we do that, it's far easier for our conscience and our spirit to seek after um, the fire baptism. Okay? And now, this is how John the Baptist is likened to the first Elijah because remember the first Elijah had the ministry of fire he was able to call fire down on the, the enemies of Israel at the time which were part of Israel because through um, Jezebel and Ahab they had accepted uh, other gods, other idols other gods into Israel whereby there was priests of Baal uh, and all of that who are idol worshippers who cut themselves like uh, even the Muslims do today in Mecca. Um, it says in the Torah that we're not to make any engravement into the skin, not to cut our skin or put any uh, image or icon upon your skin, which is a tattoo. And yet uh, in Islam they do this. Uh, and, you know, they'll say all day they're big on Moses' law, but, well, they're, they're very... Um, weak on a lot of things within Moses' law. Obviously Judaism um, still upholds a lot of the Torah, um, which is a good thing. I think God is pleased with that. It's just that God wants to take us forward with him, and he wants to show us the plan of salvation, which has been there from the beginning. Even if you study the stars, um, the gospel and the stars, as it were, it shows you the from the virgin to the lion. God's redemption plan written, Genesis 1, 14 to 16. You know, they're, they're there for days, years, signs and seasons. And uh, so Yeshua said that John the Baptist was even greater than Elijah. Now remember that 
Enoch and Elijah were tra both translated, taken up into heaven. Um, that they didn't actually see physical death as, 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 as much as we would understand it. But if you truly um, give your life and confess your sin to the Lord, that within baptism, you're truly dead, my friends. You're truly dead. I mean, don't you understand that? That that's what baptism is? And so I think at some point that these holy men, Enoch and Elijah, would have gone through something like that. Even though the, the baptism of John wasn't around then, or it wasn't, you know, widely made popular then, um, I think that they probably would have still died to the flesh, as it were, uh, that the Apostle Paul speaks about that. And that there is a spirit within man that sort of battles against uh, the Spirit of God, because the Spirit of God is just pure Word of God. Um, and, you know, when we receive the Holy Spirit, um, a lot of us are commanded to go and fast. I was only commanded to fast for seven days and nights, but physically I, I'd have been capable to do a lot, lot more than that. Um, but what, what I can say is that, you know, some people go off and they, they just immediately fast 40 days without even a word from the Lord. They, they haven't even heard from God to do that. And I just think that we should really seek God's voice. Um, I think that's very important. Go back to the subject. Why would Yeshua say that John the Baptist was even greater than Elijah or Enoch? Okay. Now, Enoch, Enoch's ministry um, was very much to do with testifying against the fallen angels of the day who came and took human women um, began to educate men in building cities and having certain technologies um, before the flood of Noah, of course. And through these means, it caused men to really transgress against God and that um, in their hearts that God became less and less prominent and it was all about the things of the world. That, that's all, all they lived for before the flood. The things of God were just uh, way, way um, in the back seat somewhere, lost. And um, obviously, you know, this is the days that we're living in today. Very, very similar days we're living in today. And so Enoch said to the fallen angels that uh, their time had come, they'd be given a certain number of years, and then them and their children would be judged. They would be bound in chains of darkness and um, put into certain places of the earth, which is described in the book of Enoch, which I'm quite certain that things like CERN are trying to um, bring down certain... Um, shields as it were that are keeping these fallen angels bound um there's quite a few christians and other people uh really speculating about that because we we read that in revelation 9 that uh you know there are a certain number of fallen angels that get out and their children the nephilim you know that the human beings of today are very very busy in this genetic um manipulation um, um, transhumanism and all that stuff okay and so you know we really are in the last days guys we truly are in the last days and you know Enoch told them that uh, they had lost their place in heaven they'll no longer be able to get into heaven and that also their children would, would, would be killed in the flood which actually happened of course but later on they came back because there were other fallen angels from heaven Originally there was 200, but we read from the, bu the book of Revelation and other parts of the Apocrypha that in fact a third of the angels are fallen. It's just that they all didn't fall at this, into the same time continuum as it were. A bit of back to the future language there. But, um, you know, things in God's kingdom and other parts of the heavens are different from the time that we experience here on earth. And so... Um, it's very much described that the dragon, who, who, who is sort of like head of them all, who is, is really Satan, the devil. And there are lots of fallen angels and devils and all of that, like high-ranking rank, fallen angels. But uh, the dragon, as it were, is really 
um, reserve for the sort of last few years on earth before Yeshua comes back and I really believe that um, he is now present um, in the earth um, very much so and so uh, you know as we wait for the son of perdition to be revealed and uh, of course the, the church or those who are in Christ I don't really like calling Christians the church because if you're a true Christian you probably won't be attending any churches because they're so corrupt today. Elijah's ministry was of course to clear up uh, the mess that Jezebel and Ahab had left Israel in spiritually and um, yes he certainly called down fire on armies uh, and killed even the prophets of Baal um, but John the Baptist ministry is a ministry that um, is saying to the people, no matter where they are, that they, they can't actually stop worshipping their idols and they have a chance to repent. And instead of being thrown into the, 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 the fires of hell, which they're heading for, they can go and humble themselves, you know, put on sackcloth and ashes, and they can repent and seek the Lord. And at that point, if they repent sincerely, the Lord will accept them, um, will send someone to, to baptize them in John's baptism, and also um, later on that they will seek the, 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 the fire of the Holy Spirit anointing, which usually comes after water baptism. That's usually how things happen. Sometimes, you know, we hear of um, the Lord intervening in people's lives supernaturally, and, um, you know, I've heard many testimonies about that, but they still have to go through the water baptism, even though they may have experienced such a, a level and presence of the Holy Spirit. It's right that we go through the baptism because Yeshua showed that we should do that. We should honor um, John the Baptist's ministry in so doing, recognizing the Elijah um, within Judaism, you know, because the Jews are always looking for Elijah. So... And actually receiving the baptism of John, which is one of repentance, you're acknowledging that Elijah has come through John the Baptist, Yohanan. And you're also, um, through the, 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 the fire anointing and accepting Yeshua as your, as your Lord and Savior, but actually seeking that fire anointing of the Holy Spirit, you're fulfilling um, the law and the prophets as Yeshua also did. And therefore, we live for God, we live to serve God, to love God. And also we live for the saints as well, to, to um, be about the Father's business with them. Um, because the Father is bringing up a generation upon this earth that he doesn't want us to be in ignorance. He doesn't want, uh, look, when his son appears, that's it. That's it, he could appear tomorrow, he could appear next week. But how is your studies going in the Word of God? Do you have a complete understanding of the Word of God? Very few of us, are, I think, have a complete understanding, but there are seven spirits according to Yeshua 11 from verses 1 and 2 that talk about the seven spirits of Yahweh. Understanding, counsel, might, wisdom, knowledge, you know, um, the fear of the Lord. Um, you know, Solomon lost the fear of the Lord even though he was given a lot of wisdom, and that's what caused him to sin. You see, so each of these spirits that are described in, in even Revelation chapters 4 um, onwards, which we've read out with their videos about before, these seven lamps, as it were, that are before the throne of God, um, keeps us in the will of God through the fear of God, but also gives us wisdom, understanding, power to deal with demons and all of that. And so, you know, just like... The patriarchs had a certain ministry like uh, Samson, um, definitely had the, the spirit of might upon him. You see, but we don't understand that, you see, Yeshua had all the seven spirits of the Lord upon him. We don't understand that if Yeshua had to fight anyone, that he would have been even stronger than, than Samson. He could have ripped these armies apart with his bare hands. He was a mighty, mighty man of, of the Lord. I don't know if you know that about Yeshua. And of course he had even more wisdom than Solomon. Because he said, one greater than Solomon is here. 
Yeshua, the Messiah. Okay, we don't realize the amount of wisdom he had because the amount of things that he had from the Lord, he didn't use them to, to for anything in the world whatsoever. He used them for the glory of God and to bring in souls to the kingdom because this is true knowledge and wisdom is to bring in lost souls to the Lord. That's showing true knowledge and wisdom because if you're about soul winning, you're actually showing that you have a wisdom of God which is very, very high and beyond that which is upon the earth. You know, you get worldly wisdom, wise guys, people that know how to make money, manipulate people, and then you get the people who are way up and beyond that. They realize that this life is very, very temporal, and just to be about the things of, of, of the Father is that that's it. Once you, once you understand that, then, you know, your life shall, will develop in the Lord. Um, hallelujah. And so this is one of the reasons that Yeshua called John the Baptist the greatest prophet, even greater than a prophet, even greater than Elijah, even greater than Enoch, because his legacy that he left, even though he was beheaded, which a lot of Christians today are being beheaded for the testimony of Yeshua, but the Lord is going to, uh, even though um, none of the politicians and all of that are perfect, I think the Lord is going to use certain ones to, uh, how would you say, rebuke certain nations which are not walking in the truth. And at the moment, the world is really like a Babylon the Great. I mean, you can call America certainly more, it's like sort of the end time Babylon and all of that. And you can identify the other nations as... We know what's written in Daniel 11 and so on, the king of the north and you get the ten kings and the beast and all of that stuff. You can identify all, all of these characters in the end times. But really, looking at the entire world, um, they, they, they truly are in the grip of, of the evil one. And it's only through the power of the gospel, my friends. Repent and believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. Be baptized every one of you in Yeshua the Messiah's name, and you shall be saved. That's what we should all be about today. So winning. Um, within the capacity and the gifts that the Lord has given you. And if you're not actually doing that, pray for those who are doing that. And, be, and just ask God how you can support people who are actually in ministry and um, going around baptizing and teaching the Word of God. You know, dear children, we truly are living in very exciting times. Um, I'm very um, excited for the Jewish people that they're, they're being offered salvation again through our Lord Yeshua. Please pray for Angela Cummings, who's, who's going to Israel today, and um, for others out there who, who are doing the work of the Lord and within your own nation. Please pray for the saints, guys. Shalom.